Okay, so we're going to move on to 3.3 proofs with parallel lines. And this, uh, there are four different ways we can prove lines parallel using a transversal. Okay, so we have our transversal. We don't know that the lines are parallel. Let's go ahead and call this line L and this one line M. Um, we can prove that line L is parallel to line M by the corresponding angles converse, saying if you have corresponding angles, for instance, 1 and 5, that are congruent, then you have parallel lines. So if you know corresponding angles are congruent, then you can say the lines are parallel. This just says if corresponding angles are congruent, I'll abbreviate there, then Go ahead and make it specific to our diagram there. Then line L is parallel to line M. Okay. And now we can use that for a couple different things. So let's go ahead and erase that. And rather than having parallel lines or corresponding angles congruent, let's say we have alternate interior or angles. Okay, so the alternate interior angles, notice that we have converse because corresponding angles, um, say, you know, if we deal with that theorem, it says if the lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent. Well, the converse says if the corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. The alternate interior angles converse will say if alternate interior angles are congruent, then line L is parallel to line M. So we kind of go the same route, and it's just this time we have alternate interior. So if 5 is congruent to 4, then that will tell us line L is parallel to line M. So this tells us that. Okay, and alternate exterior, you probably can guess what it's going to say now based on what we've talked about, but if we go alternate exterior angles, if alternate exterior angles are congruent, then line L is parallel. To line M. So, kind of erasing what we currently have on here again. Okay. If we know, if we know that, say, for instance, eight and if we they are congruent, then we know line M and line L are parallel. And the last one states if same side interior angles are supplementary, meaning they add up to 180, okay, or um, consecutive interior angles, then line L is parallel. line M. So once again, kind of using that information, we have to know that uh, those angles are supplementary. So 3 and say 5, if those two add up to 180, if their sum is 180, then M and L or line L and M are parallel. So using that information, that allows us to write some proofs and to make some calculations. So in this example, it says find the value of x that makes u and v parallel. Okay, well, I want to know that this is parallel to this, and the only way I can do that is if these two, based on what they give us, is if we say these two angles, which are alternate exterior, are congruent or equal to each other. So 150 would have to equal x plus 112. 
meaning this angle down here would have to equal 150 degrees. Okay, so if I subtract 112, I end up with x equals um, 38 degrees. So when x equals 38, that makes this angle equal 150, and then you have alternate exterior angles congruent, therefore u would be parallel to v. And if we move on over to this next one, we have, well, now they give us uh, corresponding angles. And we know that corresponding angles would have to be congruent. So we'd have like 12x minus 4 would have to be congruent to 10x plus 10. If those angles are equal, then we know that the lines are parallel. So in this case, if I collect my x's on one side, so move those 10x's over by subtraction, we get 2x minus 4 equals 10. Go ahead and move that 4 over, we get 2x equals 14. And then x would have to be 7. So if x is 7, notice that's 12 times 7 minus 4 and 10 times 7 minus 4, or, seven, or excuse me, 10 times 7 plus 10. Well, 10 times 7 is 70, plus 10 is 80. 12 times 7, well, um, <coughs> excuse me, that, man, yeah. Um, 12 times 7 is 84, and then if I subtract my 4, I end up with 80. So we get 80 degrees equals 80 degrees. We are good to go there. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and do some proofs here. So we need to, uh, given that G is parallel to H, and angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, prove that P is parallel to R. Okay. So we're looking at this. Look, let's look at we, what we have. We have G is parallel to H. That's marked for us. Okay, and angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, so I'm going to mark that. That is congruent to that. Those are both given statements. They list it right up here for us. We do know that 1 is congruent to 3, and we know that because we're dealing with parallel lines right here, and 1 and 3 happen to be on the same transversal. Now, that's a key piece here. In order for you to know that for instance, 1 is congruent to 3, we'd have to have parallel lines on the same transversal. And we can use the corresponding angles theorem. And I'm just going to write corresponding angles there. Parallel lines, the angles that are corresponding have to be congruent. We know that 2 is congruent to 3. Now, we know 2 is congruent to 3. We can see it on our markings here, but they didn't give us that. We can't use corresponding angles here because notice even though they lie on the same transversal right here, we don't know that R is parallel to P yet. So therefore, we don't know that these two angles are congruent. And that's a key piece of information. In order for you to say this is congruent to this, you have to know that the lines are already parallel, and we don't know that. Well, that's what we're trying to prove. Therefore, uh, we can still say that 2 is congruent to 3, but we can't use corresponding angles. We actually would have to say, well, we know 1 is congruent to 3, and 1 is congruent to 2. 2, therefore 2 and 3 have to be congruent by transitive property. And then we can say that P is parallel to R. And P is parallel to R because of the converse of corresponding angles. Okay, Because converse of corresponding angles, since 2 and 3 are congruent, which we've now stated, we can say that these two lines that are connected on the transversal to those angles are also parallel. Therefore, by the corresponding angles converse. All right, next one, notice now they made it a little harder here this time. They don't give you the actual statements. So. Let's take a look at it. We're given that G is parallel to H. It's marked for us. Okay, that almost looks like an N, but it's an H. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. That is not marked, so I'm going to go ahead and mark that. And that's a poor marking there, so we'll try that again. All righty. All right, and so I'm going to actually write that down. G is parallel to H. And angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And that is given, right, <clears throat> number two. Well, we can kind of go a similar uh, process here. We know that 
angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 because G is parallel to H and these angles are corresponding. So based on corresponding angles, 1 is congruent to 3. And if I can prove 1 congruent to 3, I can look at this and I can say, well, these right here are alternate exterior angles. Okay. However, these lines aren't parallel, so I can't do parallel. I can't prove that they're congruent, but I do know they're congruent, and I'll know that they're congruent because of the transitive property, and then I can use alternate exterior to prove the line's congruent. So let's kind of write that up. So 1 is parallel, to, or 1 is congruent to 3. And we know that based on corresponding angles. All right. And then we also know that 3 is congruent to 2. Now, we can see it on the markings here, but we don't actually have that over here. But we do know that 1's congruent to 3 and 1's congruent to 2. Therefore, 2 and 3 have to be congruent by the transitive property. So you start seeing some patterns here on, di on these different proofs. Transitive property. All right. And then number four, because we know now that 2 is congruent to 3, we can actually say P is parallel to R. P is parallel to R, and what we're using there is the alternate exterior angles converse. I'm going to abbreviate that. All right. Notice we end with what we're trying to prove there. Well, let's go ahead and look at another one here. This one, we're proving P parallel to R. We know that angle N is parallel to M. Now, it would have been nice if we actually would have labeled these. So let's label that N and M. Let's pretend they gave us that. Um, since we don't see it on there, that's my mistake. So this is N, this is M. Okay. So given, we're given that N is parallel to M. We're also given that 1 is congruent to 2. And I'm going to go ahead and mark that. We already know N and M. They're marked for us, but 1 is congruent to 2. Notice, now you can't use alternate, or excuse me, corresponding angles here. I, I've seen some students try that, but these aren't connected by a transversal, so they have to be on the same line. Like if we knew this one and this angle, 1 and this angle, then we could say that those are congruent, or parallel, excuse me, P is parallel to R, but because they're on the same line. But 1 and 2 aren't on the same line or the same transversal. Therefore, we can't actually just start out by saying that P is parallel to R. Okay, but we do know that uh, 1 is uh, congruent to 3 also. Okay, oops, I forgot to put my given here. All right, and we know that 1 is congruent to 3 based on alternate interior angles. Okay, and then we can look at it and we can say, well, we know that 2 and 3 are congruent and kind of the same theme as what we've had in our uh, couple other proofs since 1 is congruent to 2 and 1 is congruent to 3, 2 and 3 have to be congruent. And that is by transitive. Okay. And then we could state that since these two are congruent, we know P is parallel to R. P is parallel to R based on, well, those are alternate interior angles. So the alternate interior angles, and it's the converse because we're stating these lines are parallel based on those being congruent. All right. <clears throat> so if you look at that proof, that proof, that proof, all of those kind of have the same general theme there. Now, we move on to a proof that looks like this one here. And we have some same side interior angles. Notice we have uh, 1 and 4. Um, it almost... I mean, you start looking, you're like, man, there are a lot of angles in here, and you start, well, these are inside of parallel lines, but they're not, they're not on the same 
or excuse me, they're not they're not inside P and R. However, um, if you're if you're trying to look at it and, and go, well, this might be congruent to that by, um, or excuse me, uh, this might be con excuse me, these two might be congruent based on um, uh, same or might add up to 180 based on same side interior. Remember that your your uh, your lines have to be parallel for us to prove that. And so there are a lot of different things going on in this picture because you have two different, um, or you have a bunch of different angles. You have uh, angles different in different locations, and um, it just looks a little more complex than, say, like that picture where everything looks a little more clean or that picture. Okay, You have a lot of angles on the inside of lines you're dealing with. So it just looks a little messy. So let's take it step by step. G is parallel to H. So, oops, we dropped a G there. So there's G, okay? So we'll say number one, line G is parallel to line H, and that's marked for us with these markings. We also know that angle one and angle four are supplementary. Okay. And that's given. And so... I list all my givens first. I know a lot of teachers do it differently, but I, uh, that's just how I've always done it. But So I'm going to look at uh, 1 and 4. Those are supplementary angles. Now, we don't have a big way we're going to mark that, but it's important to note there. Now, if we look at this and we start going, okay, I want to prove that this is parallel to this. So I know that these are same side, and if I could state that they were supplementary, then I could, I could prove that P is parallel to R by the um, all, or same side interior angles converse, okay? So maybe I can get that. Well, I look at this and I go, well, I know that one has to be or congruent to two. And that has to be true because I have parallel lines and on that transversal I have alternate interior angles. So angle one is congruent to angle two based on alternate interior angles. All right, and so now when I look at this, I remember if I can go, well, 2 is supplementary to 4, then I could prove that these lines are parallel. Well, I do know that 1 and 4 are supplementary, and I know that 1 is congruent to 2. Well, that would mean, based on substitution, based on substitution, I know that angle 2 and angle 4 are supplementary. Now, that's hard for you to see. Notice that since 1 and 4 are supplementary and 1 is congruent to 2, that means anywhere where I see a 2, I could put that 4. So right there, that could be replaced. Okay? They're supplementary angles. All right, and then I know that um, since those two are supplementary, based on that I know P is parallel to R by the um, same side interior angles converse. Oh, and by the way, that's also called the consecutive interior angles converse. I've just always seen it as same side interior angles converse. Very cool. All right, well, that's all I got. Good luck, you there.